Section 1. Introduction of Powerlifting About the athlete writing this fine work. Hi, thanks for picking up this book. I am glad you have found an interest in powerlifting. I look forward to helping you reach your goals. Now that might sound somewhat weird since I obviously do not know you, but it is still true. I am writing this book because I want you to be successful. Now you might ask, why should I listen to you, Nate? Well, simply put, I have been there. So let me tell you a little about it. Before we go any further, let me give you my credentials. When listening to anyone speaking definitively on a topic, you want to know that person is knowledgeable about the subject. Well, I have my credentials, and I forged them in steel and sweat. Before I started lifting, I was a weakling of 135 pounds at 5 foot 8. I had trouble doing 10 push-ups. That was in 2002, while I was age 22. Fast forward 10 years to 2011, and you find me as a 32-year-old weighing 185 pounds at 7% body fat. I have benched 350 pounds, squatted 500 pounds, and deadlifted 535 pounds. There are videos on YouTube. Simply put my name in the search bar. I also practice MMA, boxing, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, and a little Taekwondo. Again, there are videos on YouTube. I am not a competitive athlete, but I have competed in some local competitions and even competed in a contest held by Champion Nutrition. Please feel free to look at the videos on YouTube for further proof of my credentials. Indeed, even, look there if you want accompanying videos to complement this manual. After all, it is free. You could be nice and leave a positive comment on my page, though. I have lifted at several gyms in the Michigan area. A couple of the gyms were private gyms, and a few were public gyms. Richie's Fitness is one I was at until 2010. It is an average gym, home to a few local competitors, and guest host to the occasional pro competitor. I currently lift at the Fit Stop. It is home to Dustin Crago, a USA Powerlifting, USAPL ranked powerlifter, and 2010 Arnold Classic competitor. The Fit Stop is the former home of the semi pro bodybuilder Christopher Wright, home of locally ranked lifter Tony Arroyo, home of former competitive powerlifter John Ford, and home to a list of other lifters, both competitive and not. I have had the pleasure of knowing three of these lifters and have been in contact with Mr. Arroyo and Mr. Cargo for some years now. Mr. Arroyo and I are former lifting partners. The Fit Stop also boasts a personal trainer who is an NPC competitor. Mark Sampson placed sixth in the light heavy division of the 2009 NPC Kentucky Muscle Competition. Mark and I have had a number of conversations about the sport of bodybuilding and powerlifting. He is one of the nicest people you will meet. He is a personal trainer for both local Fit Stop locations. The Fit Stop is also host to Vitamin Giant, who co-host annual Midwest powerlifting events, such as the National Physique Committee, NPC, sanctioned Muscle Madness event. A gym is expanding in the Midwest. In the beginning, there was powerlifting. Okay, so maybe powerlifting was not there at the beginning of the universe, but man has long been obsessed with strength, physique, and other physical endeavors. From the caveman to the traveling strongman of the early 1900s to the modern man, strength has been a source of pride and ego. Powerlifting is a platform for many people to engage in friendly and sometimes not so friendly competition. Early strongman contests were far different from what is present today. People in the 1900s considered strongmen as circus freaks. Nowadays, things are a bit different with powerlifting having become more like any other sport, such as football or basketball, although not quite as popular. Bodybuilding, powerlifting's better-built brother, is the forerunner of powerlifting. The obsession with the Golden Age bodybuilders, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, and Tom Platts, helped foster the interest in the methods that got them there, and while bodybuilding is different from powerlifting, they are related. Some of the same moves used in powerlifting are in bodybuilding. Another area that helped to popularize modern powerlifting is Olympic powerlifting. Although generally referred to as Olympic weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting is powerlifting, just by a different name. The same mechanics that USAPL powerlifters use is the same as what an Olympic powerlifter would use. The biggest difference between the two is the types of lifts performed. In Olympic weightlifting, the snatch, clean, and jerk, and formerly the clean and press, are all performed movements. 
Note, the clean and press is no longer an event. In powerlifting, there are three main lifts in competition. The traditional barbell bench press, the barbell back squat, and the barbell deadlift. These are the bench press, squat, and deadlift. However, since there are other similar moves that are performed that are not included in competition, it is important to differentiate between the variations. Powerlifting becomes more popular as time goes on and with all types of people. Obviously, the Olympic-style powerlifting has brought every country into the mix. Powerlifting also crosses genders. While some people may believe it is a man's sport, which is true to some degree, there is definitely a place for women in the sport. Take, for example, the lovely ladies Melanie Roach and Kara Mohegan. Mrs. Roach and Mrs. Mohegan are fine examples of women who enjoy powerlifting. It has been said the women who lift weights become unattractive, big and gross, or some other derogatory term. Mrs. Mohegan has gained a bit of muscle, but that is what she wanted. Mrs. Roach has muscle, but she is still very feminine, with a husband and two kids. A further case in point is my wife Grace, who lifts, but is very feminine. She still loves her high heels and makeup. If you are a woman reading this, don't let anybody discourage you. The principles in the manual will serve you well, too. Whether you are male or female, young or old, skinny, built, or fat, the concepts in here will work for you. This journey is one that any person can complete, and I am here to help you do that. In the process of working through this manual, you and I will cover a variety of material, and you will learn how to be successful. I will take you with me through some of my workouts via pictures and the text in this manual, which you can refer to in the ebook version. You will visit a few of the gyms I frequent and meet some of the people I know. You will get a taste of what I and any other hardworking powerlifters go through to meet our goals. Most of all, you will gain the knowledge you seek. Here we go! The Powerlifting Concept – The Ability to Move Objects I have heard it said that powerlifters and bodybuilders are just meatheads. A meathead is a derogatory term used to insinuate that the target of the word is unintelligent. Get rid of that notion. Anyone who is successful at bodybuilding or powerlifting, whether personally or competitively, has to be able to think or have someone to do it for him or her. Many factors play into powerlifting. It is not so unlike another sport. You must think intelligently or lift smart, as some people would say. Lift smart is a good tagline for powerlifting. If you do not think about what you want to achieve, set goals, and intelligently take the steps to get there, you will not be successful. So keep that in mind as you go on. I imagine you are, though, since you picked up this book and are reading it. You have taken the first steps. Before you embark on your journey into the world of powerlifting and the training that will get you there, it is necessary to understand some of the concepts behind powerlifting. Powerlifting is the ability to raise or move an object with great speed or force. This is the true meaning of powerlifting. Whenever you put your hands on a bar with the intent to powerlift, you should remember that definition. When you get under the bar to squat, remember you want to explode, move with force, in a controlled manner. The same can be said for the bench, deadlift, or any other related movement. Notice how I said controlled. That is something else to remember. While you want to explode through the movement, you need to maintain control of the movement. That is keeping in line with the idea of safety first, but I will get into that more in later sections. Part of the powerlifting concept is that the body works as whole to complete each lift. Whether it is the bench, the squat, the deadlift, or any other relevant lift, the whole body works together to effectively complete the move. Let us take a movement that everyone has performed. Running. At some point in your life, you have run. Maybe in gym class, from the cops, or maybe a crazy ex-girlfriend. I'm just kidding. Seriously, though, think about running for a minute. Could you run without feet? No. Could you run without arms? Yes, but it would make it harder. Could you run without a waist? No. My point is that running requires the various parts of the body to work in unison in order to run effectively. Some parts are essential, some not so much, but each part makes the run better. The same is true about powerlifting. In any lift, there are multiple components of the body at work. 
The muscles are at work, but that is not the whole story. The muscles will be working, but each muscle or muscle group gets help from connective tissue found throughout the body. The ligaments and tendons play a vital role in accomplishing each lift. Connective tissue acts as stabilizers for the body and keeps the various joints hinged in place. People take this for granted each day. You, as a power lifter, need to keep this in mind when you train. An unstable body cannot lift. A joint that is unhinged cannot work. It is that simple. The last area that takes a part in completing a lift is the nervous system. The nervous system is the electrical system that powers the body, and it must work properly. We will not be concerned with the technical terms of the nervous system here. There is a lot of technical information on how the system affects the lift, but we will keep it simple. It is just good to remember that the nervous system is involved and that the programs outlined here will improve that system. This manual will cover the three main lifts that comprise competition powerlifting and one more that I find is essential. There will also be compound assistance exercises that will complement the main lifts. These assistance exercises will help you become stronger in the main lifts. While the main lifts work the essential muscles, ligaments, and stress the nervous system in the basic way, the assistance lifts will work the same muscles in different ways for increased stimulation and progress. These assistance exercises will also work muscles less worked by the main lifts. A person needs to make sure all the muscles involved in the lift are strong enough to handle the pressure. This helps to ensure success and to minimize injury. An important and often overlooked factor of any training program is diet and supplementation. This is especially true of beginners. Diet and supplementation, if needed, is an essential part of success in any training program for any sport. If a person's diet is not well-structured, then they will not be successful in any venture that is dependent on a well-functioning body. A body must have fuel with the essential macronutrients, including carbs, fats, protein, vitamins, and minerals. We will only touch on this slightly in this manual. The topic of nutrition and supplementation are a book unto themselves. I hope that I will be following shortly with a nutrition manual to act as a companion to this manual. Eat and be well. We will cover stretching, cardio, and some polymeric work as well. Each of these will be smaller parts of the program, but they will each serve their purpose. The stretching will keep your muscles flexible and healthy for performing heavy lifts. Plyometrics will help teach explosiveness that is important for powerlifting. Cardio will ensure your body's cardiovascular system is healthy and functioning so it can aid the body in the ways necessary to powerlifting. Remember, in the end, the body is only as strong as its weakest link. Do you want to be weak? I didn't think so. Heading down the road. So you want to be a powerlifter, huh? Well, if not, you at least want to be strong like one. Then you have to train like one. Well, that is what we are going to do here. You are motivated. That is why you picked up this book, right? I have introduced you to the concept. We did that in the first section, in case you did not remember. Now, how do you start? Well, you need to figure out a few things first. One is how much time do you want to pour into your training every week? What are your maxes? What type of program do you use? What to eat? What to supplement? What, 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 what? Whew, got away from myself for a minute there. It's okay to laugh. In all seriousness, there is quite a bit to think about, but it is not as hard as it may seem. We simply have to break the process down into the individual pieces and attack each one individually. Let's start with some terminology. Some terminology. Barbell. A steel bar, generally six feet in length, that is loaded with plates to perform exercises. You perform the entire major lift list with a barbell. Loaded. Loading. A bar with weight plates loaded onto it. Loading the bar. Plates. Steel plates that slide onto a barbell. They come in a variety of sizes ranging from 2.5 pounds up to 100 pounds. Lifter. The person performing the lift exercise. Spotter. The spotter is a person who spots you in the lift. If you have trouble in the lift, they help you out. For example, if I cannot push up the bar during the bench press, my spotter would help me by pulling it up and helping me rack it. Power Rack 
The machine you will use to squat in and do the military press. It is a safety system designed to help you perform lifts, especially the squat, safely. This cuts back on the potential for injury and the nervousness associated with it. In Figure 2, which can be seen in the ebook version, me lifting during a workout at Richie's Fitness, formerly Atlas Fitness. I am the lifter in this image. The barbell is the bar that is in my hands in the picture. The plates are the round black discs that are loaded on the ends of the bar. In this picture, I am performing a 385-pound bench press with a bench shirt. Sergio is my spotter, and he is spotting me.